Brent Milliken, and I work with International Rivers, director of the Amazon program with International Rivers, based in Brasilia. So in terms of what are some of the big issues having to do with the ants in the Amazon, um, there's an um, unprecedented number of dams that are not being built or planned to be built in the next 10 years. And, and just in the Brazilian Amazon, it's around 50 dams, and there are much larger ones, and then there are a very large number of smaller dams as well. And the problem is that this has a social and environmental impact that is really uh, without precedent in the Amazon, and it's being done in a way that's really riding roughshod over legislation on human rights and environmental legislation as well. So Brazil has this relatively progressive environmental legislation that is really not being respected, just as human rights legislation is not. And in general, what we see is that the social and environmental footprint of these dams and the risks that they present are not being considered in the environmental impact assessments. There's a huge amount of political pressure to approve the licenses of these dams, contrary to the technical opinions of the staff of government agencies. And then after these projects get approved, basically, even the very small amounts of mitigation and compensation measures that are called for are not even implemented. So they're having a huge impact in terms of causing social and environmental disruption. And what we see is there are much better solutions for Brazil in terms of legitimate energy needs. Um, first of all, questioning, you know, what can be done to improve energy efficiency in Brazil in the level of generation, transmission, and also consumption of energy, industrial offices, and, and also residential. And then looking at alternatives for uh, other sources of generation of truly renewable sources like solar and wind. So in general, we feel that there are much better solutions that could bring more benefits to the country, including job generation, um, without anywhere near the sort of impact that the dams are having. And that there's really a need for a more democratic debate in Brazil about energy planning. We think that's the biggest, the biggest issue is, is opening up the black box of the energy sector in Brazil and having a more transparent and participatory process of energy planning for the country and then a more participatory process of development with local populations in the Amazon. What sort of development do people want? And the, um, the, the, the concerns, the desires, the dreams, the proposals, the ideas, the knowledge, the wisdom of the local people here is typically not being considered. They're carried out by large construction companies uh, that are the, the main interested parties in building these dams, together with the energy sector, with, with uh, state-owned enterprises within the Brazilian energy sector, which are part of the Eletrobras family. So these are both, you know, actors that have vested interest in building these dams and underestimating the impacts. And so there's obviously a, a conflict of interest between those that are doing the study who should be looking objectively at the real impacts of these projects um, and, and, and the vested interests of these groups that are, it's in their inherent interest not to be exposing the real extent of the damage that can be caused by this project. So that's a big problem in the way the projects are being planned and licensed. No, there isn't. Um, even at the level of river basins and much less at the level of like, ecosystems or even biomes like in the Amazon. And including the interfaces, for example, between the Andes and the, and the Amazon where also a number of dams are being built. Um, Brazilian environmental legislation is very advanced in the, to the extent that it talks about the need to look at cumulative impacts of dams and the synergistic impacts of, of, dam, of several projects at once. So when you're licensing a project, you're not supposed to just look at the impact of that one project. You're supposed to understand, well, that project combined with another project that's going on, what sort of combined impact it have. And that's not being done in the environmental impact assessments. 
although the legislation states that you should be doing that. This is a resolution of the Brazilian National Environmental Council since the mid-80s, since 1986, and it really hasn't been done. More recently, the inventory, river-based inventories that are conducted by the energy sector with their private sector partners, uh, the Ministry of Mines and Energy adopted a regulation saying that in those inventory studies they're supposed to be looking at the integrated environmental impacts, that we call it integrated environmental assessment. Um, but what we're seeing is, first of all, that there are several basins where they're not doing that, like in the case of the Tapajós, where there are seven dams planned, large dams. So after Shingu, that's the next big target for the dam industry. And then in the few cases where they are doing these integrated environmental assessments, there's very little that's integrated, very little that's environmental. Um, they're, they're really not looking at some of these key issues like impacts on ecosystem uh, fauna, on fisheries. Um, the impacts on indigenous peoples are very poor. Looking at environmental flows, um, ecological flows of the uh, river ecosystems, those sorts of issues are not being looked at. So both from an environmental point of view and a social point of view, or what's often called as a social and environmental point of view, these impacts are still very, uh, they're not being looked at, and then the, the few instruments that are starting to look at them are still very weak, they need to be improved. I think the legislation could be improved. The norm looking both technically and also legally. Um, the Ministerio Público, the Public Prosecutor's Office, is initiating lawsuits. They're questioning that. So I think there are, there's, there's room for improvement in the instruments and the legislation related to those planning instruments. Um, I think part of it has to be, there needs to be a lot of transparency about the way they're done. So, for example, these sorts of studies, they shouldn't just be approved by the energy sector. They should be a transparent process uh, in, 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 in the way they're prepared, in the way they're analyzed and discussed before they're approved. You know, a huge expense to the Brazilian population, to, to the Amazon, to the, to the present and future generations. I think it's you know, the antithesis of sustainable development in a lot of ways. So hopefully there's still time to turn things around. I think cases like Bella Monch are really a watershed case because they're, you know, they're bringing issues to the, to the public attention and hopefully things can change.